I want to say something, and it's, it's in a sense following what Mohammed said. Today, there is possible justice for a group of families in Northern Ireland. We've just heard this afternoon, the Savile Inquiry has said that not one of those people who were shot on Bloody Sunday was carrying a weapon. Not one of them. And it has taken almost 40 years for that to come out. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we have to wait 40 years to get justice for the people that were demonstrating last summer, last Christmas. But it is important to realize that when people talk, and I suppose it's easier for me to say this than probably other people in this room, that we have spent, I personally have spent many, many years of my life saying that Britain is not quite the just society that in fact it's always what we want it to be. And clearly the question of Bloody Sunday was one that at last, long, long time later, we're beginning to see what in fact happened. And for some families, there is some sort of resolution. Not in terms of getting their children back, or their fathers or their mothers, but at least to know that they were not guilty of what they've been accused of for over 35 years. The other case I want to talk about is a case that happened a bit closer to here, which was Broadwater Farm. And that was in 1980s. And there was a riot. There had been a, a woman, an Afro-Caribbean woman, had been killed in her house when the police had gone in. And quite understandably, the community was very angry. And lots of youngsters were throwing stones and were attacking the police because they held the police to be responsible. It was an armed police group that got into to Mrs. Jarrett's house. And what then happened was a police officer was killed and three men were picked up and accused of his murder. And those three men got life sentences. Eventually, and it wasn't too long later, they did go to the Court of Appeal and it was found that the three men were in fact innocent of what had happened. So in a sense, we've got record in this country of where the police or the army have acted against communities. One, an Irish community, and Broadwater Farm was not a middle class area it was a multicultural area in North Haringey, which was very clearly one that the police thought that they could police in any way they wished to. And I think it's, it's important we remember that. But I'm interested in what Joanna was saying. She kept talking about the last 10 years that policing has actually been quite careful. And that is true. Since 2001, when we came together, stopped the war, Palestinian Solidarity Campaign, CND, BMI, all of us came together to protest about what in fact had happened and what was beginning to happen in this country, both in terms of subscribing to the war either in Afghanistan or Iraq, or the sort of, the sort of new laws that were coming and all the conspiracy laws that were coming in. Those were things that for many of us we felt we had to, to respond to. And I don't have to say this to any of you, because all of us know it. It's the very first time in this country where Muslims and others were all demonstrating together, were working together in a way that is quite, quite different from most parts of Europe. It is something that's really important to recognize, that what we've built over the last 10 years is a hugely important relationship where we recognize the pressures on part of the communities, particularly the Muslim community now, and are determined to try and do things about it. But what also happened was that given the size of those demonstrations in 2001, 2003, where maybe two million people were on the streets of London, the police could only stand at the back. They couldn't operate in the way that they had previously been able to operate. The numbers involved were so great. The negotiations a lot of the time were very clear. And over the last 10 years, there's been quite substantial changes in terms of the way that the police have operated in relation to demonstrations. Until, first of all, there was Manchester about two years ago, just over two years ago, when we all turned up to demonstrate in Manchester. And it was because the Labour Party conference was there. And I think most of us were very shocked. I mean, I've been involved in Stop the War since 2001. 
And when I got off the train at Piccadilly in Manchester, there was suddenly you were confronted by police in riot gear. We'd not seen that in the streets of London in that way at all over the last 10 years. And then what happened, the next bit that happened, was of course Gaza. And the attack on Gaza by the Israelis was so horrendous that huge numbers of people wanted to demonstrate against it. And of course people were angry. But many of us who went on it, I was on it, my daughter was on it, and her children were on it, small children. And it became clear that the police were operating in a way that you just knew that the kids had to get off the demonstration. You just began to feel that. It was about what they were wanting to do. And part of it was because you had a very, very angry representation from a large section of young Muslims. And that, I think, was one of the key things about the way the police decided to take it on. It was not about the fact that it was me demonstrating, a middle-class woman, you know, white. They're not going to hit me. But they saw very large numbers of young Muslims, very angry, and rightly angry, rightly angry at the fact that this government had refused for a start to even condemn what was happening in Gaza. So we were right to be demonstrating, both against the Israeli government and against our government. And it was a hugely important act, that was. But what then happened, of course, was that the police were angry about what had happened. And we know, Joanna said, Imran's talked about the, the effects of it. And it is something that, without doubt, was a hugely major thing because, of course, we had the G20 or whatever it was, G whichever, 20 it was. They change these numbers all the time, these Gs. But this is, the G20 demonstration, of course, was another example of it. But I think the thing that is also quite important for us to realize is that if you look at what happened over the last demonstrations this summer, when the flotilla had been attacked and people had been murdered by the Israelis, and there was a very spontaneous, large demonstration, but not by any means as big as the ones around Gaza. It was ones where the police backed off. They were very concerned. Now, some people may say it's a change of government. You've got a new you know, coalition <laughs> government that's going to be much more you know, in agreement with the idea that people should demonstrate. I'm not sure it's that. I think it's much more that they were worried about what, in fact, is also going to happen. If they police the way that they did last year, they are going to get increasing difficulties. Now, and I don't, I don't underestimate what Imran said about the Bradford operation. The Bradford operation was designed to make sure that young Asian men, and they were mainly men, would actually be quiet and intimidated, and they were. But it's something that I think is really important now that we make sure that it is something that we take on board. I think there is one thing that we've got to recognize. The impact of the killings on the flotilla, and I know that Sarah will say something about this, is clearly going to be something where people are focusing on that at the moment and are actually wanting to do things about supporting families or you know, sort of organizations that are actually wanting to take that forward. It's absolutely central that we make sure that what happened to the young men and women who were picked up after the Gaza demonstration are all the time part of what we're saying when we're talking about what happened to the flotilla. It is part and parcel of the same thing. It's another operation that the Israelis have been involved in, and it was one that quite clearly manifested the way that the anger in this country has got to be channeled somehow. I think there are two things. First of all, we've got to make sure that the demonstration, and it's got to be a demonstration, a big demonstration outside the Court of Appeal, when in fact the appeals come up at the beginning of July, is an absolutely crucial thing. It means whichever organization we're in, whatever links we've got, whatever friends and family we've got, we've got to talk to people and try and ensure that we've got as big a representation there that day as possible. Because Imran is right. It doesn't in one way affect what the judge is going to say. He's not looking out the window, making sure whether in fact there's riots on the street outside. But it does make some impact in terms of publicity. If there are people outside the courts, and if it's as always our demonstrations are, if it's a very mixed crowd outside, 
that's even more important.